I was talking with another tech the other day about motors and windings and things of that nature. So it uh, brought up a conversation and we realized that a lot of young guys don't know what the inside of a compressor looks like. And they call every terminal a winding. So what I want to do just for a few minutes is show you what a compressor looks like and talk about not necessarily the poles, but the windings and the terminals you'll see on a couple different styles of compressors uh, or motors in, uh, more specifically that you'll see uh, around the field. So let's take a look at the first one. Uh, it's going to be a compressor. So this is the inside of an old reciprocating compressor. You can see I've got the train compressor uh, sitting right next to it. But this is the actual winding setup inside the old reciprocating type. So you, what we've got here is a thermal overload. So if you see that you have a thermally protected motor, then there's something that is a temperature related switch, okay, that's in there. This one happens to be just a real simple, normally closed, clicks on brand variety, two quarter inch male terminals. I mean, it snaps right in place, but it sits inside inside this shell uh, to uh, sense the temperature of that motor, okay? Now the windings themselves, if you look, uh, you're gonna have to do uh, more research. I don't have enough uh, animation and software and all this stuff to make this thing pretty, but this is what we're talking about when you see motor poles, okay? One, two, they come in sets, one, two. You know, three, four, five, six. It's always an even number. You're never going to ju have just a one pole motor. All right. So, what we have are the run and the start windings here. And when you hear about motor poles, the, the easiest way that I think about it is pretty much for the for for the run winding. Okay. That may not be entirely true, but that's just how I get it in my head. We can look up the specs on this old motor, and it will tell you since it's a fixed speed motor that it has somewhere you know 34 3500 rpms and that's indicative of a two pole um, induction motor so uh, i know that there it looks like four windings in or four poles in here but it, it's not okay we're usually talking about that that run winding okay and like i said that's how i think about it so this is what it looks like run start um, and as one gets power then it creates a directional rotation uh, with that uh, motor shaft the whole thing kicks off okay so two windings are in here call one run call one start it's not going to matter for our purpose right now but uh, understand that there are two windings this is one and then this is one okay now when we look at the terminals we'll drop you down When you look at the terminals, we have one, two, three terminals. So these are not three individual windings. I just showed you, and you can kind of see down here at the bottom, uh, this is the uh, lower end of the wraps uh, on this, uh, this motor. But we have a run, a start, and a common terminal. Three terminals. We don't have three windings. We only have two windings, but they meet on one end and join together, and that's the common terminal. Don't go calling it like a lot of, uh, I know some 20 year guys out in the field that they call it, you know, it's, it's three windings. It's, it's not three windings, it's three terminals. If you want three windings, you gotta get a three phase. So run, start, and common terminal, but there's only a run and a start winding. They both meet on the common end uh, or one side of that winding is connected together and they call that the common terminal. So even though I've done this before on another, uh, another compressor, another unit, uh, what I'll do real quick is we'll ohm out and show you the resistance values of these two windings. So three terminals, I'm gonna put one lead on common. I'm gonna check the run terminal to the common terminal. That's gonna give me the whole run winding, 1.1 ohm. Then I'm gonna go from start to common. So that's gonna be the whole start winding. It's gonna be about two ohms. So one ohm, two ohms. And if I do the run and the start terminals together, I should get the added value of both windings, which is uh, you know 2.9 right at three. So it's only two windings, three terminals, but they join together on one and they call that the common side. So, 
So the second motor we're going to look at is this one here. It is a 208 three-phase motor that we have in one of the training labs at work. And the thing about three-phase motors is we still have three terminals, right? We're still going to have three wires. Um, we have a ground for safety, of course. But the difference in a single-phase PSE compressor that has two windings and three terminals is this one has three terminals and three windings uh, and that's that's indicative of three phase so if I were to own one terminal to the next okay I got 4.9 ohms and then I'm gonna ohm out another two 4.9 ohms then I'm gonna ohm out the last two that I have, haven't uh, done yet 4.9 ohms when you ohm out a three phase motor you're pretty much going to get the same resistance for all three windings. So, still three wires in the ground, still three terminals, but three of the same resistance windings in this three-phase motor versus two windings in your PSC compressor motor that I just showed you. Now one more motor just to round this out. This is a ECM 3.0 motor. I have went ahead and taken the module off and inside the module you'll see it's got some potting to keep the electronics safe and you can see all the capacitors and everything. But right here in this corner is the winding connection plug, the, uh, the electrical plug that ties the motor to the module. Okay, So you can see we've got, once again, three terminals or three wires on that plug. Here's the actual motor itself, just the stator. I've taken the uh, the rotor out. Um, this motor is a little bit different instead of, I think that what they call this is a concentrated winding, is uh, around each little area in the stator they wrap that winding, okay? Or, whereas the compressor next here, or excuse me, the compressor that's uh, just off the uh, the corner of your screen the PSC motor it kind of takes the windings and and goes over two or three of these so uh, yeah maybe we'll do something with that one day but anyway if you were to take and ohm out these three terminals these wires that you have in this motor um, so I've got black blue and red I'm gonna go black to blue right 10.7 ohms if I go black to red, 10.7 ohms. And if I go blue to red, then I'm going to get 10.7 ohms. This is a three-phase motor. Okay, um, That's what it's made like. All the windings in a three-phase motor have the same resistance. And there's kind of three distinct windings. Uh, whereas your single-phase PSC, you have a run and a start. You've got a capacitor in there, so you uh, the winding on one is a little bit higher. Um, some differences, but understand that just because you, th you see three wires or three terminals does not mean that you have three windings. That would be true in a three-phase motor, but not in your, your residential style, single-phase kind of PSC. A lot of what you're gonna see, like I said, you don't get to see the inside of it, we see a shell, but you've only got two windings that are in there so hopefully this makes some sense and you know it wasn't 27 minutes long so uh until next time